Here's an example of modeling exponential population growth. We have an island with two populations, one of cats and one of mice. The cat population grows exponentially. The mouse population decays exponentially. So the cats are winning here. At t equals zero, we have 100 cats and 600 mice. Two years later, we have 400 cats and 200 mice. Now, we're going from 100 to 400 cats, 600 to 200 mice. So at some point, the population numbers are going to be equal. So that's our problem. We want to know at what time does the cat population overtake the mouse population. A key idea here is our model for exponential population growth. So once we know that, we can write down a formula. So it'll be the form or population at time t is equal to p sub 0 times e to the kt. Now, because e to the 0 is equal to 1, p0 is just going to be our population at time t equals 0. So that's our initial population. We also have, if the k in the exponent is positive, we have growth. If it's negative, we'll have decay. So we can use that as a check at our numbers when we find them. Now, we're given at t equals 0. Okay, we have 100 cats and 600 mice. So that's our first step to set up our formulas. We can put in the initial populations. If we use the conditions for t equals 2, we obtain the two equations. So note, the only variable here is k1. The only variable here is k2. So to solve for k1 and k2, I need to isolate the exponential and then apply the natural log. If we apply natural log, natural log of e to the box is just equal to box. Now, for the first one, divide both sides by 100. We apply natural log to both sides. That gives us 2k is equal to natural log of 4. So if k1 is equal to 1 half natural log of 4, I can move the 1 half to the inside by our exponent rule. So we get natural log of 2. If I go to a calculator, that's roughly 0 0.693. That's positive, so that confirms that we have growth. Now, we apply the same procedure for the mouse population. So we'll do the details. We just wind up getting k2 equal to a half natural log of 1 third. The half can go to the inside. But before I do that, I know that 1 third is 3 to the minus 1. So I'll bring the minus sign to the outside. We push the 1 half to the inside and I have minus natural log squared of 3. We go to the calculator, we get minus 0.549. So this is negative and we in fact have decay. So that checks out. Now, that means we have the equations for C of t and M of t. We're going to set these equal to one another and then solve for t. Now, again, I want to isolate an exponential, and then we'll apply natural log. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over 100, e to the natural log squared of 3t. Okay, so the plus sign here is going to make sure that these two cancel to give me a 1. Now, that gives us, okay, we're going to have e to the natural log 2 times t. Multiply that by e to the natural log squared of 3 times t. And then since we have like bases, we can add the exponents. So we have this on the left-hand side. On the other side, the 100 and 600 become a 6. And then as I noted, these two terms collide to give me a 1. The exponential is isolated, so I take natural log of both sides. I think of this complicated term as being in a box. So natural log of e in the box is just what's in the box. And on the other side, we have natural log of 6. Note, the only variable now is the t. So we can go to the calculator, put the numbers in, and what comes out is our answer of 1.44 years. Of course, we check our work. So if I take our values at t equals 0, t equals 2, we connect the dots, we see that we expect our answer between 1 and 2. So 1.44 is reasonable. If we go and put 1.44 into our equations, 
Okay, so you have to pull out your calculator. We had 271.72 for both. So again, our work checks out. 